You're just a number. That promotion you were promised, gone. The flexibility you enjoyed, vanished. In today's corporate world, your years of dedication mean nothing. Welcome to the new reality of work, where mass layoffs are the norm, employers treat you as disposable, and that cushy work from home setup is being ripped away. In this video, we're diving into the cold hard truth about modern employment. You discover why job loyalty is dead, how companies really view their workers, and what you need to do to protect yourself in this cutthroat environment. Buckle up because it's time to wake up and face the facts about your so-called career. Now what's funny about this is that I never used to feel this way about having a job. I'm a Gen Xer and my parents both immigrated into the US back in the 60s. And when I grew up, my parents always instilled in me that you had to be loyal to your job and good things would happen. For example, my dad worked at the same company for over 35 years before he eventually changed jobs. My mom has had the same employer for over 50 years and is retiring this year with a pretty nice pension. So when I decided to leave my first job out of college after just two years of employment, they flipped out. Leaving this early will hurt your chances of getting another job, they said. You are being disloyal to your company. Just stick it out. But here's the truth. The kind of company employee loyalty that my parents experienced no longer exists. Now tell me if you disagree in the comments below, but these days, especially in the Silicon Valley where I live, companies could care less about their employees. With the exception of the executive suite, most employees are just cogs in a machine. And back when I was an engineering director, one of our lead engineers left the company, which made me extremely worried about the future of our main product. So I asked the VP why we didn't match his other offer, and he replied to me with a straight face. Everyone is replaceable. Don't worry about it. And it was at that moment that I realized that my company didn't really care about me either. Now it's been a while since I've worked for the man, but I still keep in touch with many of my friends with jobs. There's very little employer loyalty, and as a result, worker loyalty has gone to the companies willing to pay them the most and treat them right. For this entire year, there have been mass layoffs in big tech where I live. Some of my friends have lost their jobs, but the ones who survived the layoff are now stuck with double or even triple the work. They are expected to work 24-7, answer emails immediately, attend every meeting, and stay up late to work with their overseas teams. So basically, they are making up for all the laid off workers and getting burnt out at the same time. And their reward? Nothing. Because times are tough in the valley, they aren't getting any raises at all, and that, my friends, is just a slap in the face. To make matters worse, they are now expected to physically go into the office eight hours a day to work, even if they don't interact with other people in the office. A lot of going into the office now is just FaceTime, where the appearance of productivity often outweighs the actual work accomplished. Now here's why the traditional 9 to 5 model is dead. Back in the day, during the Industrial Revolution, there was a direct correlation between time and production. For example, if you worked on the car assembly line at Ford Motor Company, you could work on about a thousand cars in an eight hour shift. Because manufacturing was done on an assembly line, everyone's productivity was about the same day in and day out no matter your skill level. But today, knowledge workers don't work on an assembly line and the level of productivity varies widely depending on the person. So why the hell are we still following a work system that was designed a century ago? There's very little manufacturing done in the US today and most of what drives the US economy today is high tech. Back when I was an electrical engineer, I was the most productive from nine till about noon and then I was mostly a vegetable in the afternoon. So basically, I didn't work at the same speed throughout the day. Meanwhile, I had coworkers who worked an entire eight hour day and didn't accomplish anywhere close to what I did in four hours. With the decline in manufacturing, forcing everyone to work an eight hour shift at the office is obsolete. One of the reasons why I quit my job was that I was required to show FaceTime at work. Imagine being told that you need to physically stay in the office even when you have nothing to do. I was literally getting punished for being efficient at work. And this is why I eventually started a side business selling handkerchiefs while working for the man and made enough money to replace my day job. More on this later. But by the way, if you're interested in learning how to start your own online store to earn extra money on the side, make sure you sign up for my free six day e-commerce mini course below. Now clearly, the traditional nine to five work day isn't working, but what is the alternative? Well, here's what's going on with many companies in the Silicon Valley. More and more businesses are firing employees and hiring freelancers and contractors instead of full-time employees to save money, and this trend is accelerating. It's because companies don't have to pay contractors any benefits or insurance, which saves them a ton of money. 
Also, unlike employees, contractors can be hired for specific projects or tasks, and you can fire them at any time for any reasons, whereas firing an employee is not as straightforward as you might think. I remember one time there was someone on my staff at work who was horrible at his job and I wanted to fire him because I spent so much time checking over his work that it was affecting my own productivity. But can I just fire him? No. Because the company was not doing a large layoff, I had to put him on a six month performance plan, document all of his shortcomings so that the company wouldn't get sued. With a contractor, all you have to say is, we don't need you anymore for this project. See ya. Now you might be thinking to yourself, no big deal. If I get let go, I can just become a contractor. But the biggest problem with being a freelancer or a contractor is that you have to find your own work. And when there are mass layoffs, work is scarce because everyone who just got laid off is looking for a job. Anyway, if you're worried about losing your job in this economy, here are three things you can start doing today to future-proof your career no matter what happens. So first off, you should get better at your job and make sure your boss knows it. In other words, you should be proactive and constantly learn something new on your own. When I was an electrical engineer, I got placed on a project to design the hardware to process H.264 video. But instead of just working on the hardware, I took the initiative and read a textbook on video encoding and decided to write both the software and the hardware for this project. As a result, I became the de facto expert in video at my company and the only person who knew both the software and the hardware aspects of the product. Now, the truth is, is that doing just enough to get by isn't good enough to keep your job or ask for a raise. You need to constantly be upskilling yourself to stand out from the competition, which in this case are your coworkers. After I completely crushed a video project, I asked for a raise and my boss gave me that raise without hesitation. Throughout my 20 year career working for the man, I survived four major layoffs before I left the workforce on my own volition in 2016. Here's the problem with working a J-O-B. Leveling up will allow you to get raises and avoid the layoffs, but the problem is that even if you are the best at what you do and you constantly get raises and promotions, you are still trading your time for money. There are only 24 hours in a day and it's impossible to scale a job. Plus, there's a limit to what someone is willing to pay you for your skill set. For example, there's no way that I was going to get paid $1,000 an hour as an engineer. And this is why it's essential to create other income streams. After you're making enough money with your active income stream, you should start something on the side. When my wife and I started BumblebeeLindas.com, my wife hated her job. Every morning, she would come to me with this long face before going to work and say, Honey, I'm off to the hellhole I call my job. And because of this pain, we decided to start a business selling handkerchiefs on the side. And I know it sounds random, but everyone has some sort of pain point in their lives. And the easiest way to start a side hustle is to address your own problems. Here is our problem that led to our handkerchief business. My wife cries a lot. So when she and I got married, she knew that she was going to cry at the altar, but she didn't want to be photographed using ratty tissues to dry her tears of joy. Also, we spent an ungodly amount of money on photography and wanted to get our money's worth. So we looked all over the place for handkerchiefs, but couldn't find a single store in the US that carried them. And finally, we found a factory in China to make them for us, but we had to order a couple hundred of them. So we used maybe six or so and put the rest on eBay and they sold like hotcakes. And as a result, we decided to give selling handkerchiefs a go when my wife became pregnant with our first child. Similarly, with MyWifeQuitterJob.com and this YouTube channel, I was getting asked so many questions from my friends about my e-commerce business that I decided to keep an online journal about our progress. And even though my friends never read my blog, I ended up attracting an audience of entrepreneurs. I started the blog in 2009, and today it's also a seven-figure business. Over the years, my blog has led to a podcast of the same name, this YouTube channel that you're watching right now, which makes six figures per year, and an annual e-commerce conference called The Seller Summit. I'm now even a Wall Street Journal bestselling author of the book, The Family First Entrepreneur. Now it's all quite random, but I started all these businesses while working full-time as an engineering director. This is the new reality that we all live in. You might think your full-time job is secure, but it can end in an instant like my laid off friends in the Silicon Valley. As of May 16th of this year, 289 tech companies had laid off 83,749 workers, and that number is only going to increase. Last year, over 263,000 tech workers lost their job, and Intel just announced a layoff of 15,000 people. Starting a side hustle, whether it's freelancing or an e-commerce store or a blog or a YouTube channel, is essentially preparing a safety net before it is too late. Do not quit your job before you start a side hustle. 
Do both at the same time. A 2024 report discovered that 44% of new business owners in the U.S. launched their businesses while working part or full-time in 2023. You can and should too. Even if your side hustle only makes a couple thousand dollars per month, it will provide you with a safety net of income in case you lose your job. Now, if you're interested in learning how to start your own online store, which is my main business, watch this next video here. And feel free to ask me questions in the comments below.